Good morning all. Today I've got the 8-bit computer project box out because I want to make some uh, single in-line LED arrays. So the idea is to replace these eight blue LEDs and these, well it would be eight red LEDs with blue and red bar graphs. Now these are 10 segment bar graphs. You can buy eight segment but actually the 10 segments are more freely available and uh, therefore they're probably a bit cheaper if you buy them in uh, bulk. But also it has the advantage that uh, I can use the ninth pin out of the 10 pins that run along one side to make something that's very similar to a single inline resistor which has nine pins, one of which being a common. So I'm going to use one of these 10 pins as a common. I'm not going to use all 10, I'm just going to use nine. So let's start with um, a red bar graph. Now you can light it up with a coin cell just by running it along the pins like that just to check that uh, all these segments are fine and also that gives you an indication of which are the cathodes and which are the anodes. Uh, so the cathodes, the pointy end, will go to negative. Uh, so these are the cathodes up on this side here. Uh, correction, that's completely wrong because uh, the big end of the battery is actually the positive. So that's not the cathodes, those are in fact the anodes. Now there are really three things to concern myself with here. One is do I make these common cathode or common anode? I think I'm going to make them common cathode, so common ground, because I want to, um, really I want to be looking at uh, positive signals. So if a signal is high, I want the LED to be on. If I made these common anode, then it would kind of be the other way around. Uh, these would light up if the uh, pin goes low, and I don't really want that because that's kind of inverse logic. Now the second thing is do I want red or do I want blue? Those are the red and those are the blue. Um, well that's going to depend on really the color of the switch block that's sitting next to this set of LEDs. So, and I don't quite know what the configurations are going to be yet. So I'll make some reds and some blues and it might be necessary because of the different um, voltage drops of red and blue LEDs to use different resistors. I'm going to use a 471 for red. I might use something a bit lower, like a 220 or something for the blue. And then the third thing is which way around do I want them to hang off their single row of pins? Bear in mind that one of these rows of pins will be got rid of. So if it's down here on the bottom edge of the board, I really want to make, retain the top row of pins. But if it's sitting up here on the top of the board, I really want to keep the bottom row of pins and bend these ones over. So I really need to be making four types. They're all going to be common, uh, what did I say, common cathode, didn't I? But I might want to make some that hang that way and some that hang this way. And of course, some will be red and some will be blue. And actually, it's just occurred to me that there's a fourth parameter, uh, which is where do you want the common pin? Do you want it to be to the right or to the left? Now here, for example, on these address pins, I think these are A7 down to A0. And then, of course, there's some other pin right next to A0. So I don't really want common there. I want common to be out this way. So it does look to me like I'm going to have to pretty much make these bespoke. So I'm quite glad I bought 10 of each. So I'm going to make a bespoke one uh, here. It's going to be red. It's going to be common cathode. Uh, the anodes or the positives are going to be up on that top edge so that it hangs this way. Uh, the common pin is going to be biased out towards the left and I'm going to use a 470 ohm sill pack as the uh, resistors for each LED. So here's the circuit diagram of uh, one of these uh, LED bar arrays. Uh, it's just literally LEDs. There's nothing uh, fancy about it. I've only drawn eight of them. And what I want to do is I want to put uh, single inline resistors. So there's one per LED. So I'll just draw squiggles here. These are the resistors. They're going to be uh, 471, so 470 ohms. And then they will be all commoned down here to a common pin. And on this one, I want that common pin to be taken up and sitting on the left of all the anode pins. So it's going to end up being a nine pin device. So these pins on the top here are my anodes because if I put my positive on them, the LEDs light up. So I want to keep these pins. 
I'll probably lose the one uh, to the far left and then the next one will be my common pin of the sill so that's actually the pin that has the little dot or in this case a diamond on it so that has to be soldered onto that ninth pin and then all these pins on the bottom probably these last two can be cut off these have to be folded in and soldered onto the remaining pins on this sill so I think the first thing I'll do on this resistor pack is bend all these legs back over, up over the top of the resistor body because I want to have those uh, reasonably flat along the top there so that when I bend over these uh, now they'll be the cathodes yeah bend these cathodes I've marked an A and a K on there um, down onto these folded over pins I can bend them down on top of these and solder them so let's bend the remainder of those over the body of the sill trying to get them as straight as possible now the next thing is this is going to sit in the middle of this uh, dill LED like that so I'm going to have to cut most of that pin off actually I might just bend it up and then I can solder it oh no that won't work because these pins need to uh, push down into the holes of the breadboard so I'm going to have to solder it very high up on the pin so I think I'm going to have to cut that one short and solder it onto the ninth pin so let's get the soldering iron out now I really want to uh, kind of glue this into the underside of here um, but I'll probably coat it in hot glue eventually so I think what I'm going to do is just use a little tiny bit of blue tack um, run along the bottom edge of this and just stick it down in underneath this uh, dill LED pack just to hold this in place while I start soldering all the legs and then I'll flood it with hot glue later on I think so there we are just a little thin sliver of blue tack and I'm going to cut this pin quite short I seem to remember it needed to be and now stick that down in there um, first actually I think I'm going to have to flood solder onto the common pin of this sill resistor um, and then solder it onto this ninth pin but what I don't want is I don't want the soldering kind of the solder flowing up the pin by capillary action because then it's going to interfere with the contact between that pin and the breadboard so I want to try and keep the solder right at that bottom end and not have it flow up the pin uh, right so I'm not sure how visible this is but I've put a good old blob of solder on the common pin of the sill and another one right at the sort of base of this ninth pin and then the idea is to join those two together uh, in here right so it's not ideal because the camera blocks my visibility of what I'm doing a little bit but let's give it a go got to join those together not have solder run up pin so I think that's reasonably good okay right now I want to bend uh, these pins which are the cathodes so that they'll all go through resistors and then be commoned to that pin I want to bend them down over these and solder them onto uh, where these resistor pins come up so they're a bit long I think I might cut them all down a little bit uh, before I bend them down right so now I've bent these uh, which are they keep forgetting uh, that's the anode these are the cathodes so I've bent those down onto uh, the respective pins on this sill resistor I need to solder all of these eight connections and then chop off the tenth pin there these two pins there can go because I don't need the other side of the ninth LED I'm just using its pin um, as a pin I'm not using the ninth or tenth LEDs at all so I'm going to solder all of those now right let's see how tricky this is shouldn't be too bad I can flood these quite heavily yeah that's working fine let's do all eight of those and that I think is all of those soldered and that's very nearly it all I want to do is cut off that tenth pin uh, magnetized cutters not good cut off that ninth pin on that side because on that side 
there are going to be no pins, they're all bent away. And I can cut off the tenth pin on the actual side I want to use, that's shot away. So I've ended up with uh, nine pins, that's my common. Uh, these are my exposed anodes, so I put positive onto those. And these are my cathodes going through resistors back down to the common pin. Let's see if it works. Right, so on the breadboard computer, um, this device, which now has nine pins, needs to connect to the first eight pins of this chip, pins one to eight it is. And then my common pin is this left-hand pin on my display. So that needs to go to ground. So I've linked a link across there and another link up there to uh, negative. So if I plug this in now there, then it's got its eight signals and one ground, and that should light up. Now I'm gonna have to wire this chip up so it actually does something. Right, I've rigged up the uh, memory part, this RAM module to uh, my clock board, and I've just put in an LS393, which is a, an eight bit counter uh, clocked by the 555 timer. So we should get the full um, 256 counts or 8-bit binary count. Let's switch on and see what it looks like. And uh, there it is. I'm going to need to uh, lower the light level a bit. But there it is counting in binary. Now it's not quite as bright as these blue LEDs. In fact, if I shield that and press the right button, I'll just write that value, which is a whole bunch of zeros, so that's a bit less distracting. But yeah, you can see there that the uh, bar graph is connected to those eight address lines of the RAM, and it's counting up in binary. I've got the clock running reasonably swiftly. Now, of course, these two LEDs on the left, that's probably, and it hasn't fully written to every location. Uh, these LEDs on the left, the two on the left, aren't being used. That's most locations written to. Uh, the other eight are. Now the question is, what do I put over this? Actually, I should probably peel. Let's just take that out for a moment. I should probably peel this cover off. I might put red insulation tape on this display, which would mask those two. You wouldn't then see them. These would still show through. That's still got a bit of data in it, hasn't it? Let's put that back in there. Yeah, I might try a bit of red insulation tape on there. Right, a bit of red insulation tape, uh, sticky side up. So I'm going to place this face down onto there. And now I need to get my knife and trim round there. Okay, let's trim that edge. Am I actually cutting through? Yeah, just about. Trim that edge. That one. And that one. Oh yeah, that's quite nice and neat. Right, let's plug this back onto this RAM chip. So it goes there. And that's it. Uh, let's get in a bit closer. Right, I've just uh, reset the RAM so that it's got random data in again. And I think that is a bit neater and certainly much easier from the point of view of removing it and uh, putting it back. If there's going to be a lot of that, I don't know. But yeah, I think I might have gone for perhaps a lower value resistor. Perhaps I'll do that next time. So that it's a little bit brighter. Because it's nowhere near as bright as these blue ones. Mind you, these blue ones, uh, firstly they're blue. And secondly, they've got 150 ohm resistors. Now wait a minute. Have I done this the wrong way round? No, it's the right way round, isn't it? Because um, a blue LED has a higher forward voltage so more of the battery voltage 5 volts is going to be lost across that junction so less of it is going to be across the resistor so for higher current you need a smaller value resistor um, so this is a higher value but um, I don't know 470 just seems a bit dim maybe I'll go for uh, 330 or something next time I don't have any 330 sil resistors but uh, maybe I'll get some so there we are, there's the first of my uh, little uh, LED bar arrays, which I'm going to use to show 8-bit data. Uh, I'm single-stepping this now, but I think that's pretty neat. Let's make that nice and symmetrical. Yeah, so that's uh, 1010, 1010, 1010, 
AA in hexadecimal. Right, I'm happy. Cheerio.